You're listening to a free audio download from Venue Cymru's International Concert Series. Welcome to the April edition of pre-concert interviews from Venue Cymru. Hi, I'm Nick Hardesty, and this month I caught up with Russian pianist Nikolai Demidenko before he gave a recital of Beethoven and Chopin. Nikolai, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, since you studied at the Moscow Conservatoire, which is notoriously rigorous, I wondered whether you explain um, what it was like being a student there. Yes, but uh, why do you think it was notoriously rigorous? <laughs> was it just, uh, just a normal uh, learning process, as it should be, uh, very full yeah. and uh, very demanding, I'd say. And uh, we had loads and loads and loads of different disciplines there, apart from musical yeah. ones. And uh, at the time I thought that uh, I could leave without about five or six of them, that's for sure. Uh, mm, years after, I would say that it all was for a purpose. Yeah. Even the things which uh, I, at the time, considered completely useless to me as a musician, uh, if nothing else, they were a fantastic training for memory. Mm. You've seen uh, some of our universities and conservatories in this country. How would you compare uh, the rigour as such? Well, I would say that uh, we, uh, we had a different attitude sure. to what we were learning. And uh, the most important thing was that uh, time is very limited. Uh, it looks like five years in conservatories, five mm -hmm. years or oh, a long time. It's not. And uh, if you consider that uh, this is probably the most important period for any young musician, yeah. when uh, it's a serious chance to learn, mm. learn the most important things. You will continue learning afterwards, but uh, that's the basis of it. Mm. Uh, so I was uh, absolutely immersed <laughs> into studying and uh, got quite a lot of it. Uh, but I would say if uh, I'd have a second chance, yeah. I'd probably do twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> Now you mentioned that the, you, you were also um, encouraged to do other things whilst in Moscow. Is that right? What else did you do apart from just the musical activities? Uh, well, I studied electronics. Uh, that was an interesting counterweight. And uh, if you think of it, uh, music is an incredible thing, but uh, when you live in it 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. non-stop, it just needs something for counterbalance. Yeah, sure. And to me, it was electronics and photography. Oh. So what about now? Do you have a, another hobby outside of music now, then? If you call it hobby, well, metalworking is yeah. a nice thing, yeah. and uh, I'm trying to learn the stuff. Uh, it's just interesting, and uh, especially, uh, I have to take care mm. of my working yeah, instrument, sure. <laughs> hands, and uh, if something goes wrong, I'll be the first one to know, so <laughs> uh, I try to do it so that uh, I anticipate whatever can happen and yeah. uh, I don't leave uh, anything for chance. Sure. Yeah. Plus it's a good discipline, uh, uh, when you work with a piece of paper and a pencil you can just erase it and start all over again. If you work with metal and you miss something, start from the square one. Yeah. Sure. And this is a different attitude again. Yeah. Now I wonder... Um, I often hear quite a lot about there being a so-called Russian technique when it comes to piano playing, as opposed to something more in the European. So I wonder whether you might be able to explain some of this. It depends what you mean by technique. Uh, for some people, uh, this is how many notes per second are hit. Uh, it's not that. If you think of a whole process, what is music? Music is not the material stuff. It's mm. uh, a way of communication, emotional communication, between musicians and the audience. And it works both ways. Uh, so, of course, uh, all the technical stuff is incredibly important. And Horvitz said that uh, apart from purely mechanical skills, mm. uh, one takes uh, a temperament, uh, imagination, and uh, a lot of other things, and that all is technique, according to him. Uh, but I would put uh, an analogy that uh, when you study at a music school, at college, at the conservatoire, 
you are just building a big runway and the airplane it's not a flight yet <laughs> when you build it then you take off then the flight starts and music is flight in this case now I notice although um, you're seen to be uh, an authority on concertos of Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky and the Russian people like that um, you also tend to record quite widely into places like Bach and Scarlatti and the earlier composers so how important do you feel this is for uh, musicians generally and for pianists well, sense of style uh, and uh, in general what is called a good sense, mm. it's important in music. Uh, we have great uh, amount of liberties allowed to us. Uh, how much can you put on a piece of paper if you are a composer? How much of real music you hear you can fix with those little dots? 3%, 4%, mm. not more. Everything else is up to the performer and uh, if even if you think of a uh, music score as some kind of a bible which has to be followed uh, the only precise thing is uh, which note it is yeah. how long well it depends and then all the other remarks they are faster slower louder softer and composer cannot tell us how much faster how much slower it's up to us. So uh, that uh, freedom is uh, basically limited by the good sense, by knowledge, by cultural background, mm -hmm. by all, all these things. And uh, it's just important to remember uh, that if we change too many things, yeah. then perhaps we should take uh, the name of a composer off the poster and put <laughs> our own. And then I wonder <laughs> how much audience I'll have. No thanks. <laughs> Now, I've always, I've always been very interested in um, preparation and perhaps routines before concerts. So I wondered if you were willing to share any routines you have before you go on. Well, just music. Yeah. Just music. It's an it's incredible world. I'm a very happy person as uh, I'm doing all my life. The thing I'm, I love the most. Yeah. Sometimes I'm being paid for doing it, <laughs> which is also good. Yeah. so that I can live <coughs> and continue uh, but in principle no it's always different sometimes I just uh, mm. go for a walk Yeah. sometimes I look through the score it's an ideal kind of concept for some critics when you sit in a comfortable chair there is a music score in front of you and not a single sound that's fantastic <laughs> and how about when you say come back to a piece that you've played many times before sometimes comes easier sometimes uh, more difficult but there is one thing important that uh, we are very much tied to our time mm. and uh, when we listen to wonderful incredible recordings of Rachmaninoff, Godofsky, Busoni from nine uh, from beginning of the 20th century fantastic playing we can't play like that first of all any imitation has no value and the time has changed and the manner to express your emotions completely changes uh, even more to that uh, we cannot play the the same way as we played 10 years ago so every time when after more or less long period i have to return back to the piece it's uh, largely uh, like coming to a new piece discovering there some new yeah. things i haven't seen before it doesn't work like a tape recorder no. no, I just wondered whether you tried to uh, come back and do the same things or just approach with a completely fresh. But it's fast, it fast just uh, it works like that. Yeah. Uh, it's impossible to play twice exactly the same. It will never work. It worked only for one great performer, for Arturo Benedetti Michelangeli. But even then, there was some kind of spontaneity in his mm -hmm. performances. Just uh, the way he treated music, it was like he want to present to you absolutely finished article but music is a live thing it changes yeah. changes every time and uh, when sometimes you have uh, in the middle of a concert you have uh, someone's uh, mobile phone going off in the auditorium and that happens quite often it's like a knife in the back I must tell you but uh, that also changes things uh, sometimes you start you don't know what will uh, happen afterwards mm -hmm. it depends how instrument responds after the first note then everything depends on that 
It's a very interesting uh, area. Yeah. Sure, sure. And do you find there's a difference between preparing for, say, a recital like tonight where you're just playing on your own for the entire concert and for, say, playing a concerto or two with... Orchestra? Well, there is one thing in common. It's an old good joke when some man comes to New York uh, stops a taxi and asks the driver, "How do I, do you know how to get to Carnegie Hall?" And the response he was, "Oh yeah, man, practice, practice." <laughs> and uh, that's uh, basically it's uh, one important thing in common. Not only with the instrument, but uh, practice goes around the clock. Yeah. Uh, you always try different things. You always try what if, what if. With the orchestra, of course, you depend on your partners. Uh, and it's so much easier to be a pianist when you are the boss, you've got your own world, you control it all. For a conductor, out of uh, 90 plus members of the orchestra, one has a headache, another one, I don't know, had been divorced, third one, uh, some problems with children, fourth, whatever. He has to make them play like one single instrument. That's the instrument conductor plays. Yeah. And uh, if pianist adds to that combination and has his own views, which is always the case, mm -hmm. that's even more uh, difficult sometimes, but uh, it's much more fun. It's a live music. Everything changes.